In the glory days of sports car racing, the 12 hours of Sebring was a stern test of speed and endurance. Let's relive the 1968 running of an American road racing classic. It's the 12 hours of Sebring next on the glory days. I'm Dave Despain, and on this edition of The Glory Days, we'll recall one of the turning points in the history of the 12 Hours of Sebring. For 1968, the international governing body had outlawed the big engine prototypes, the very cars that helped make the 12 Hours famous. And so the Sebring organizers added something new, something called Trans Am sedans, street machines, ready to tackle one of the sternest tests in world road racing. Roger Penske knew his Camaros would need endurance racing modifications like quick change disc brakes to beat the rival Ford Mustangs. Your telecast hosts, Chris Economaki and Phil Hill, open with a discussion of the driving challenge at Sebring. So what about the, the driver here in the 12 hours? Is the fatigue that is generated, does it come from driving a car or come from making himself behave? Well, it works sort of both ways. There is really a definite factor of uh, fatigue in regulating oneself to the limits that one has to have uh, for the car uh, on a long-distance race. Uh, don't brake too hard, uh, don't over-rev the engine and all that sort of thing, and if you set certain strong limits for yourself and then really stick to them, it's tiring itself. And Phil, there's 70 cars on the entry. Yes, Chris, and here are the factory Porsches. One set the fastest qualifying time this weekend. These very reliable cars have 2.2-liter engines this year, and they're getting almost 230 horsepower out of them.